last day's signs and wonders with Mel Bond. We want to thank everybody that watches our program on a regular basis. We thank you so much. We pray for you every day. I really mean that. And um, if you're not a partner with us, we'd like to ask you to consider being a partner with us. We want to give you that invitation because we're reaching out and touch the world, touching the world continually with God's unconditional love. And, and you can be a part of that and be blessed tremendously by being a partner with us. Amen. Now I want to take you right into the service, and I want to talk about the importance of loving yourself. It's so important that uh, turn your Bible to the book of Matthew. Isn't that pretty unique that I only missed it by two pages? Just, But here, uh, Matthew in chapter 22. And I want to show you from the Word of God that the most important commandment of God, which is an ordination from God, the, the most important thing that God wants us to do is to first love God with all of our heart and with all of our mind. That's the first thing that we should do. That's the greatest commandment, and we're going to read that. And then the second one, the Bible says, is Jesus said this. He said it's like the first one, and it's to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Now, you can't love your neighbor if you don't love yourself. You can't give something away that you don't have. That if somebody uh, needs to go to Kansas City and, and you've got an eighth a tank of gas and they need some gas, well, you can't give them something that you don't have. You're already running pretty empty. And so it's so important, it's so vitally important to learn to love yourself. And I'm going to show you the importance of that. Let's read it here. Matthew chapter 22 and verse um, 37, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor, and that word neighbor in the original language is co-equally rendered as countrymen. So any country that you're in, you need to learn to love all of those people. Learn and love them as you love yourself. And then verse 40 says, And on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And that word law co-equally is rendered the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the prophets are ministers that are preaching the gospel. So here, it makes it so simple. And that's one of the things that the Lord showed with me he shared that with me many years ago. Anything that God does or says is simple. If it's not simple, God's not involved in it. And stop and think about it. All of the Word of God, and as I study the Bible, that God refers to His Word as exceeding great and precious promises. So these are promises, and they're, they're all true. They're promises to enhance our life. It's not a book of laws and rules and regulations to make our life difficult. No, it's a, it's a book of exceeding great and pr precious promises to enhance our life, to make our lives better. And so all of these promises, they come to pass. All we have to do is just keep two commandments. Love God first, and then love your neighbor as you love yourself. But you can't love your neighbor until first you love yourself. And as I study the Bible, there, I find so many scriptures validating how much God loves us. That, uh, you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And we find so many scriptures like 2 Peter in chapter 1, verse 3 and 4 it says, according to his divine power, he's already given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And so God isn't condemning us. And, there, you know, there's another teaching that God has given me, and, and I could teach on this at least an hour, but I'll give you some homework. Do you know when Jesus died on the cross that he paid the price to forgive everybody of all their sins? Of all their sins. And so in the eyes of God, every human being is sinless. So why do, they go, why do some people live in bondage and have sin? such detriments in their life, and why are so many people going to hell? Because they don't know the truth. Because they don't know the truth. And so people say, well, then what about if I make a mistake and I, and I sin? 
Well, all you have to do is just admit that you made a mistake and receive his forgiveness. Receive what he's already given to you. You don't have to beg for God to, to, to forgive you because he already has. You know, what, uh, we see Romans 8, 32. He that spared not his only son, but freely delivered him up for us all, how shall he not also freely give us all things? So we don't have to beg and plead for God to forgive us. He already has. All we have to do is just receive it. Isn't that awesome? And then I find that there's at least 26 verses clear, very, very, very clear use of the word perfect just in the New Testament because of Jesus dying on the cross. He made us all perfect. He made us all perfect. And uh, so that's powerful. I've got a book titled Mystery of the Ages. In that book, there's 260 216 pages every page will have at least three or four verses at least validating that uh, the mystery of the ages is christ in you the hope of you being glorified there was a time that god had so much hope that he'd be glorified that he sent jesus to the earth and didn't jesus do a good job he, he glorified god well and and now God wouldn't let, see, even Jesus said, he says, no man takes my life. He says, but I lay it down. The reason he laid it down is so that now, really, we're the replacement of Jesus. That's the reason the Bible says that we're called Christians, that we're Christ-like. And, and so now God has that kind of hope in us. The same hope that he had in Jesus, God has in us. And that word hope is confidence assurance god has that kind of hope in all of us the whole human race that we will represent him well and all we have to do is just believe it let me show you something here in the book of luke in chapter six this is one of the major truths that even christians don't know how valuable and precious they are to god and i've said this so many times that the reason God made us all perfect. In his sight, we're perfect. You just need to believe it and receive it. Just think like it's true. Act like it's true to the best of your ability, and it'll start manifesting in the natural. But in the spirit realm, you are perfect. And the reason God did that, he did that for his benefit because he loves every human being. There's not one person that is inferior to God's to, to God. And really, that's the real title of this message is that you are not inferior, not in the least to, to God. And the reason why God made us all perfect because heaven's perfect and God can't let any imperfections be in there. And so we're perfect in the eyes of God. Just believe it. It doesn't make any difference what you think or what your past is or anything of that nature. You're perfect. And then some people, they say, well, you know, what if I make a mistake? And we all do. Well, all we have to do is just confess it. Say, okay, God, I made a mistake, and so now I receive your forgiveness again. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So all we have to do is just say, okay, God, I made a mistake. I, I receive your forgiveness. And then that word cleanse is to make us pure and as holy and as perfect as God. And then some, and, you know, sometimes there have been times I've just been embarrassed to say, God, you know, I made the same mistake twice today. And remember that Jesus was alive and Peter came to Jesus and Peter said, Lord, I've forgiven this guy seven times, seven times. And Jesus said, no, 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 not, not seven times, Peter, but 70 times seven. That's 490 times. And as I studied the Bible, that's, 490, 490 times can we receive God's forgiveness per sin per day. There's not a human being that has ever lived or ever will live that has that kind of energy. 490, 490 times per day per sin. That, that's amazing, yes. And if we, if, we, if we could possibly do that, God has already forgiven us. All we have to do is receive it. And so it doesn't make any difference. And I'll, I'll tell you one, a, a, a secret here. If you've got a, a fault, 
And I remember, I, you know, that uh, Don and I, we started in the ministry full-time in 1972. And I was 21 years of age, and, and truthfully, I'd already been preaching. I started when I was seven years of age and had a lot of problems and that sort of thing. But one of the things that kept me from going into full-time ministry was because I said, God, I can't do that because I've got some faults in my life. And, and so that's what kept me out because I, I felt inferior. I thought, man, you know, you've got to be perfect to be a pastor or to be a preacher. I can't do that. And then finally, though, I was so overwhelmed with just loving people. I said, God, I'm going to make a deal with you. I'm not going to tell anybody about my faults. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to preach the word because I know the word to help people. And I don't know what you're going to do about this other thing. But you know what happened? Over a period of time, my want-tos changed. And, and that's what happens. That eventually, you know, that you get to the place that if you just, just keep on receiving your forgiveness, finally you get to the place to where that holiness outrules unholiness. It'll just outrule it. That you'll find out that the blessings of God are greater than the blessings of sin. And so you just, your want-tos change. Look here in the book of Luke in chapter 6 and verse 35. Here the Bible says, Jesus said this, but love your enemies and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great, and you shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Now, I, I need to be honest with you. I had to learn to love my enemies because I told you I committed my life to the Lord when I was seven years of age, June 17th, 1958. That was on a Tuesday morning. But I had some major problems, got away from God, and I started running along, running around with some bad boys. And, you know, when you had an enemy, if they hit you, you want to hit them harder. That's just how, that's the group that I ran with. And so I had a hard time saying, dear God, these people have done me wrong. They're my enemy, and you want me to love them? And I said, I don't want to love them. I want to take them behind the shed. You know, I want to give them a piece of my mind, a piece of my fist, you know. But God says, why don't you give them a piece of my mind? And then I, I, here, here's a secret that I found out, that forgiveness is a decision it's not a feeling. And there's a lot of people, a lot of Christians, that they are hindered from having God's best because they don't forgive people. And most of the time, it has to do with their relatives. It's just like, you know, they've done this three times to me. I, I'm not, I don't even want to see them anymore. It, but it's a decision. It's not a feeling. See, that God made the decision to be in your presence 24 hours a day. He said he'd never leave you nor forsake you. And so it doesn't make any difference if you feel him or not. He's there. You can't go by feelings. Go by what's real. Don't go by the natural. And so uh, forgiveness is the same way. That if you just make the decision, you say it, have the actions of it, and you don't have it in your heart at all. It's not in your heart. But you see, th that's called living by faith. So you do it because the Bible says so. How many just absolutely is infatuated with your job? You can't wait till tomorrow morning and just get there. You're going to get there a half an hour early because you just love the job so much. Is there, did I see any takers? But you know, you like Friday. You like payday. So it's a decision because you want the reward. And so... That's what we do with God. We say, okay, God, I'm going to forgive him. I'm going to forgive him. I'm going to forgive him. Make the decision. I'm going to talk to him like I love him. I'm going to do everything that I need to do. I'm going to act like it. And after a while, then I truly have the feelings. Feelings come later. Don't let feelings rule you. Let the word of God rule you. And so here, God says, Jesus said, love your enemies. And he says, when you do this, he says, you'll be like the children of the highest. 
And that word highest in the Greek, it says you'll be like the supreme God because he forgives his enemies. And then we go on to see, here, here's what God does. It says he's kind. And that word kind in the Greek is he's good, he's gracious, he furnishes what's needed. To who? The unthankful. And that word unthankful, in the Greek, it says that um, the ungrateful. Have you ever done something for somebody and they didn't even thank you? And you say, well, <laughs> I'm not going to do that again. But it's a decision, and, and that's what God does. He gives it. He furnishes what's needed because he loves them. It's a decision. And that's what we need to do if we want to be children of the highest. And then it goes on to say, not only to the unthankful, but to the evil. That word evil in the Greek, this is what it says. Because I, as I study the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, I spent, I started in, in 1974, started studying the original languages of the Bible, and I began to find out that 100% of the time that God's name is unconditional love. He's only unconditional love. And this is what it says. God Almighty, that he furnishes what's needed for the unthankful, the ungrateful, and it's the evil is sinners. Did you ever notice there are some sinners, they have more finances than you've got? Well, financial prosperity is a law of God. Did you ever notice that sometimes there are some sinners, they can even breathe better than some Christians? Because air, God has given to the whole human race. It's, it's the most valuable commodity as a human being that we can have. You can't live more than, what, three or four minutes without air, if that long. And the whole human race, God can just shut the air off at any time. He's almighty God. But he says, no, I love all the human race equally. He loves the sinner he doesn't love us just because we go to church and we do all the, well, they're just special. No, no, no. Everybody's special to God. We're all special. And then it goes on to say, for the vicious. And then it all, it goes on. Now, how, many, how many promises you won't get mad if I tell you the truth? You look it up yourself. It says he loves the devil. Man. Truthfully, in my mind, I want to knock that devil in the head. He is mean. He kills little babies, innocent babies. He puts sickness and disease on people. I don't want to love him, but God loves him. There, God has no wrath in him. And if you read some of my books, you'll see every time where it talks about the wrath of God in the Bible, that there's words even in the New Testament, the word uh, uh, theos can be used in reference directly to Satan or to God. And uh, it talks about uh, uh, 2 Corinthians in chapter 4. It says the God, and it puts small case g, the God of this world blinds the eyes of those that believe not. And then it goes on and says, but God opens up the eyes of the understanding. So it sounds contradictory, and the reason why is because only God opens up our eyes to the understanding, but Satan blinds our eyes. That is the same word, theos, and you see that. I won't get into all that, but uh, I've got a book. If it's not good, it's not God, and I go into that in detail, validating that God is only unconditional love. Now I want to show you, I want to I just give you a little bit of illustrations of how important it is for you to learn to love yourself that you are extremely valuable and precious to God. I'd encourage you to buy Kenneth E. Hagen, Sr. He's got a little book like this, and when he first put it out, it was only like 50 cents. It's a little pocket book like this. You can just stick it in your shirt pocket. In that book, it, the title of the book is called In Him. There's 144 verses in the New Testament validating who you are in Christ because of Jesus dying on the cross. And it says you're holy, you're righteous, you're pure, you're, you're sinless, uh, you're all of those words that it has to deal with being good. 144 verses, and that's pretty powerful. And so you need to know that, 
And if you don't believe it, then the Bible says in 2 Corinthians in chapter 4 that it says Satan will blind your eyes. And then if he blinds your eyes, then you can't receive the blessings of God. But instead what happens is that you open the door for the devil to come in and cause destruction. I'm going to say this again because this, I'm, going to, I'm going to share some things with you that, that you need to know this so that you don't open the door for the devil to come in and cause something to come into your life that you don't want. God wants you to know you're extremely valuable and precious to God in his sight. If you don't believe that, and just believe it, it doesn't make any difference if you don't understand it. We all do things that we don't understand. I'd be willing to say there's not probably a person watching us by TV as well as here this morning that doesn't fully understand how television works. You know, I can remember my grandchildren, they'd say, we're watching TV and I'm with them and we show our TV program. And say, Granddad, how in the world do you get in that TV when you're sitting here? How, how are you inside there? And then one of them one time real young, they went around the back. How do, you, how do you do that? I don't know how that happens. How do I jump in a wire and go? I don't, you know, I don't know how that works. But, boy, I'll tell you what. I enjoy TV. I, today, you, you have to be cautious what you watch. But there's some good things on TV. If you don't watch anything else, just watch our program. That's good. But there's some good things that are edifying. And, and so we do a lot of things. I don't understand air, but I use it. And so we don't understand. You may not understand that you're valuable and precious to God, that he loves you so dearly that he gave his only son. Just believe it because the Bible says so. Is all right if I pray for you? It's going to be good, Wally. And there has, I, I see a spirit, and, and really this spirit is, he just kind of sets on your right shoulder, and he has hindered you for many years keeping you from, God's goodness, but because of him being there, that there's, he's, he's offered some suggestions, and that's, you were ordained of God to be here this morning, because one of the things that he has suggested is that you are inferior, that you, you know, that you, you weren't born with such, such and such capabilities, and blah, 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 and, and whatever, and so because you've accepted that, that it's caused some other physical problems in your body that you're dealing with. And so we're going to get rid of him, and we get rid of him, then the physical problems is going to take place. And, and I'm, I'm just going to see if the Lord will let me see the physical problems that uh, would be taking place. It looks like predominantly on the, the right-hand side, and he's on the right, like on your right shoulder is where he comes. He's not there right now, but he tries. You know, uh, he comes quite often. And it's like the right-hand side of your body, there's, it could, all the way, uh, there could be problems like in your right shoulder, all the way down to your, uh, like into your hips, maybe into your leg. Have you been to the doctor, Wally, for anything? H have, you, have you had any complications in, in your body? Right shoulder. This is going to be fun. Is it bothering you right now, Wally? It was, it was okay. This is going to be fun, Wally, because see, in the eyes of God, you're valuable and precious, and you're faultless. And so if you'll just believe it, those things will change if you'll believe it. And so what we're going to do is go get rid of the spirit. You ready, Wally? Okay. Everybody stretch forth your hand towards Wally. And let's just pray. You just sit there and just relax, Wally. In Jesus' name, we just take authority over that spirit. You leave Wally now. We have authority over you. You can't stay. So would you mind, Wally? I don't want to embarrass you. This is all good. Would you mind just standing up? And now I want you to take your right arm and lift it in the air and focus on how much better it is. Move it around. Move it around. How much better is that, Wally? Not hurting. So you got 100% relief. Amen. Isn't God good? Hello, friends. I want you to know that I'm so excited as never before. And the reason is, is because we're living in some of the greatest times that has ever come to planet Earth. 
God said in the last days that he would reveal knowledge that he's never revealed before. And this knowledge would be a tremendous enhancement to people to where that people will enter into a deeper a divine way of life that no other generation has ever experienced. Recently, that God has given me uh, this revelation, and this revelation is called the fifth dimension. And I've written a little book, and this little book is titled The Fifth Dimension. In this little book, people will uh, get knowledge of how that they can open the door of the fifth dimension and walk into it, it's filled with God's Shekinah glory and power like no other generation has ever experienced. And what's so good about this little offer, this little book, it's uh, because of the fact that it's just filled with scriptures validating that God loves people unconditionally. And so it's a powerful witnessing tool because after people read this, It'll be real difficult for them not to accept Jesus Christ as Lord once they understand the great depths of love that God has for them. And then at the very end of the book, then it's got uh, a prayer for salvation. And that's exactly the reason why that uh, we have this uh, offer as offer number 83. And you get five of, these, five of these little books for $15, and that takes in shipping and handling. So you could use it as a witnessing tool to win people to the Lord very economically. And so you can get your offer, offer number 83, for $15, and that takes in shipping and handling. You can either call our office at 636-327-5632, or you can go to our website, melbond.com, and go to the bookstore section. God bless you. God wants you to be filled with his fullness as never before. He wants you to enter into the doorway of God's Shekinah glory and power, which is the fifth dimension that has never been experienced before. God bless you richly. Thank you for watching Last Day Signs and Wonders with Mel Bond. For more teaching and information, check out our website at melbond.tv or write us at Agape Church, P.O. Box 306, Wentzville, Missouri, 63385, or call our office at 636-327-5632. Keep up to date by friending us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Last Day Signs and Wonders is made possible by the generous gifts of our partners. Please consider becoming a partner and help Mel Bond take this message of Last Day Signs and Wonders around the world.